Okay, I know, hey, it's great to see everybody here. Now, a lot of you know um, from the X that I am the founder of the X. Um, so, what about with it is in the innovation space and lots of work that. In fact, the majority of it actually is exported from the local source. So, that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited about the growth um, of technology and what it means to be a local exporter. So, this is a story that was published in the NBR. Um, this is why Crystal is shaping up as New Zealand's next tech success story. Um, and what's really interesting about this is if you look at the bottom left hand side, you see this guy going with Rob O'Neill. Rob O'Neill um, is a vision of the marketing industry, the technology industry. Um, he was the former editor of Computer World New Zealand. Uh, he's a, basically he's a contributor to everything. He's a current contributor to the NBR. If you look at the dates as well, you realise that this was written a week ago. So the people in the industry who are the movers and shakers have been school walks and have been watched. Um, we have been watching closely what's going on. I'm looking here to the white hospital and realising things are really, really shaping up to be, um, I guess, big. What's intriguing is when you look at Waikato already, so this is um, from the report that was done by um, Tawaka, so it was a um, technology and innovation survey. So many of the people um, in this room, and in fact, right across the Waikato answered the survey um, as part of what Tawaka has asked for. So Tawaka, of course, if you don't know, uh, is the economic development agency um, for the Waikato region. And what's really intriguing is that of all the companies that responded to this um, survey, 78% of them are already selling services and products outside of New Zealand. Um, and when you look at it, you realise that there's a lot of people selling um, diversely. You know, it's not just into Australia or not just into Asia. We've got a lot of sales into Canada, into the United States and into Europe. What's even more intriguing is that when you look at these respondents, 35% of all the respondents in the survey, um, this was done in November, or basically it was asked in November, 35% of these companies actually have offices, at least one office offshore. So these truly are global companies based here in the White Castle. Um, what I'd love to see in the next survey, to be honest, is a sentiment survey around, do you expect to open an office offshore in the next six months, 12 months? Because it's really, really interesting about where we're going. So, I guess based on the observations by external people like Rob O'Neill saying there's going to be amazing growth here in the White Castle, it's really interesting to understand that we're already primed for growth. And so what I did um, was, I guess, tried to establish some of the, the tenets as to why this growth might happen or, or why it's inevitable. And the first one is that we've got an existing strong global focus. And so that's borne out obviously in the, in the survey that was done by Tawaka. Um, but also as a tech education hub, you know, with the University of Waikato, with WinTech, um, with Te Wānanga Waitaroa, there's some amazing um, opportunities to actually study here in the Waikato and people actually want to stay here as well. So if you can study and stay, there's a great, I guess, cohort of people which are coming out of the, out of the universities. Um, there's an access to highly talented people. Why is that interesting? Well, you know, the University of Waikato is, is ranked globally in the top 200, 250 universities internationally. I mean, the people out of the University of Waikato are amazing. If you've heard me speak before, I mean, you would have heard me talk about people like Dr. Craig Neville Manning, a, a Waikato graduate who was the, um, you know, who invented um, Google Maps, you know? So these, these are people here from, from our region. Um, that said, Craig Neville Manning was born in Christchurch, but he did his PhD at Waikato University. Um, so there's, you know, with a few clarifications, there are some amazing people and some incredible people who have led um, our, our sort of our stride internationally. Um, in terms of success, you know, growth comes because people want to work with us, not just us doing things. And so there are some con considerations around why people want to choose us. And this is based on discussions I've had with our clients in Japan and the US and other places. And it applies to a lot, I mean, I've spoken with Carl Beacon from, from um, Gallagher around this as well, and there's some really interesting aspects of this that seem to be common threads. One is our fluency in English. You know, English is the first language. is really, really important to a lot of um, countries for an international business language. Um, but also, in terms of companies wanting to work with us, the US, you know, there's huge growth in the US as well. I'll, there's another slide I'll show you in a moment, which is quite interesting. But our time zone is very, very aligned, certainly with the US um, West Coast Pacific Standard Time that we can time shift and have very, very similar days um, working with companies in Silicon Valley and the Bay Area. Um, but also, our reputation is, is beyond reproach. You know, in terms of UN um, measures, you know, we're number one in um, ethics. You know, in terms of 
Um, effectively, you could almost roll morality into that if you want to as well, but you know, ethically we're seeing as, as in one of the top in the world. Um, capability, we're very capable. New Zealand has um, the ability to deliver. You know, we do what we say we're going to do, which is a very strong part of our ethos, and we're also very efficient. So efficiency, you can twist that a little bit to say we're also cost efficient. So we're more affordable um, than on the ground resourcing. Um, and interestingly enough, one of the things which is important to growth, if you look at any studies, is the ability to collaborate inside a market. So, you know, um, Company X, we collaborate a lot. Um, in fact, with, with many of the guys here, um, we're all collaborating on projects together. Um, but as an industry here in the White Castle, we collaborate through industry events and also through industry initiatives and in projects. So, what does it mean for Company X? So, Company X, we currently uh, um, operating for the last decade. We've worked in the US, um, but we've established the presence. Um, in North America registering company X LLC, which for us has been a big deal because it means we're now hiring a sales team on the ground in the US. We've got guys based on the West Coast and on, on the East Coast. Um, obviously, we're leveraging our now existing successes, but this is something that a lot of companies can do. And as you can see, 35% of companies already here in the White House will also have offshore offices. Why are, we, why are we establishing a team in the US at the moment? Well, we want to grow the region here in White House, but this is enabled obviously by um, by, by things like this. So this is a tweet um, by a guy called Brian Beale. So Brian Beale, currently he's one of the managing directors at Essentia in the US. He has a previous role of, um, what was he, chief evangelist at VMware. Um, this tweet, if you look at it, March 24, this is a week ago. So, you know, in the US, salaries are, are, are insane. You know, the, there is effectively a global um, demand, you know, the demand for high caliber talent, talent is just insane. You know, I know people who are getting paid, you know, who are getting paid half a million dollars have gone and taken new jobs, you know, finish on a Friday, start on a Monday and get a million bucks in the next role. Um, I mean, it's just crazy and it's really easy for a country like New Zealand to compete on the world stage when we see this kind of stuff going on. Um, what's fascinating is that we're actually, whilst we're good at this kind of work, we're also really, really um, efficient and we've also got all the benefits of, of being able to deliver this work internationally. Um, anecdotally, you know, a 22-year-old um, who did computer science at Harvard um, got a sign-on bonus last week, you know, 250k sign-on bonus in US dollars. He's got a job of, you know, 275k US, what's that, $400,000 New Zealand. So it's pretty interesting when you realise the global demand for these people. I know um, there's some stats around the number of, of non-fill rates. So, you know, there's all these, I guess, perfect storm elements which are, which are sort of coalescing together, which makes it very, very interesting for us here in the White Castle, um, because we've obviously got a, a pool, or a, a, you know, to, to quote someone, you know, um, we, we, we're tired of people stealing our graduates from our universities and taking them offshore, when actually it'd be great to have them stay here, grow White Castle and grow New Zealand, Inc. But what's the imperative? You know, and you may notice this evening there's a lot of male speakers. Um, unfortunately, in the tech industry, we're underrepresented um, by females. And which is really sad, the national average at the moment is 20% of all jobs in tech are filled by women. That means we're pretty much missing out on another 30% of our workforce that we could otherwise have. Um, so Company X, we've been doing a lot of work with Smart Waikato um, through their Secondary School Employer Partnership Program. And that's going to build, um, the Hamilton Girls High School and other schools trying to talk to year-tier students to get them really excited about tech. You know, and, and show them a vocational pathway. Because it's not all about the money. It's actually about fulfillment, enjoying your job, and, and understanding what the opportunities are. And so that's really, really important to us to increase, uh, and I don't like to use the word diversity, it's just about increasing the opportunity and, and showing people there's really, really cool things that can be done. Um, so, you know, that's something we need to realise. We need to capture young minds to show them a huge opportunity because it's great for New Zealand, Inc. But also, you know, just from, a, I guess, a balanced perspective, it's great to have a lot of diversity of opinion um, in the tech sector. Company X, we've, um, we've just managed to achieve a world first in writing management. So we have built a system which has got press um, all around the world, um, and certainly nationally around basically the first national analytics platform for um, writing infrastructure. Um, it's incredible in terms of the work that we've done, and it's been really, really well recognised. So, you know, in terms of stakes in the ground, of really cool things that have happened here in the White Castle, there are some very current stories and really great examples at the moment that we can start to use to, I guess, flag to other um, places around the world, actually this is why you should be working with us, this is, this is why we're doing cool stuff. You know, because it's good to have a legacy and a history of really cool things, but we actually need to have current stories and current ideas to keep leading. And I guess with that as well, what we need um, 
in this space is we also need capital available. And when they're stealing Bob's thunder from later on, you know, Hill Ferris is the newest innovation village here, um, based in the White Cuttle. Um, Company X, we're really proud to be limited partners in the fund as well because we see it as a really important opportunity to, to grow our ecosystem and invest in businesses um, with often non-traditional founders and people who wouldn't necessarily get access to, to capital. And this is really important, you know, when we've got a company which is doing preferential investing in the technology space, it's only but a good thing for, for Waikato and obviously for New Zealand. Um, and what's really exciting about this is that you know, a lot of press has picked up on this and realising this is also a game changer for our region. Um, you know, there's a lot to be said about overnight success. Um, it doesn't really happen, you know, and it requires money and time. And so, you know, celebrating these wins are a really cool thing for us. So once again, I want just to say um, thank you for us, um, you know, because we, I guess, you know, as a community, are doing really amazing things and we've been recognised by people who are veterans of the industry. Thank you.